Lynn Schamberger. Um, I've been a member of the EGA, Embroiderers Guild of America, for mm, eight or nine years. No, more than that. A long time. <laughs> and uh, we've had shows every two years, except this last year, <laughs> when obviously we did not have a show <laughs> that, that we put on. So consequently, I have a lot of pieces that I can show. And each one of, our, of these will have a, a label so that you'll know what kind of stitching it is. This is my favorite now. It is the Crazy Quilt, and it's a random thing. There's no rules, so you don't have to worry about what you put together, and you can put anything together. I have little plastic pieces, I have uh, charms, I have beads, I have all kinds of things, and it makes a pretty bell pull. The one closer to you is Japanese embroidery. Um, we are fortunate enough here in Dutchess County to have a woman who teaches Japanese embroidery. And I've been privileged to take classes with her. And when we're showing, uh, the things being shown, we'll have uh, five or six different Japanese pieces. The one right in front of you is stump work. Uh, stump work is, well, it's called stump work because originally in England, they would carve wood and stitch over it to, to create the uh, different levels. That, now today, we have lots better better product <laughs> to design the, the height. The uh, butterfly is gold work and it's a piece that was designed by a wonderful Australian teacher. And down at the end is a play piece. It, it has all the parts of uh, having a s <laughs> having a uh, place to put your scissors, your needles, your threads, and uh, and it's just fun. Each one of the the kinds of pieces has a different technique. The Japanese embroidery is a silk on silk. Um, the crazy quilt, you can put anything on. We've got all kinds of gorp on the, on the crazy quilt. The gold work usually has some, not exclusively, but a lot of uh, gold thread embedded in it. Stump work is always dimensional. Um, we'll have County cross stitch. County cross stitch is a, a flat uh, cross stitch. X making making X's. The, you use different materials and different stitches. Um, this one is just all silk. It's silk on silk. This one has everything, all kinds of things. I have little. Little, little things I found in my mother's jewelry box <laughs> and, and stuff. This one, although it is a uh, stump work piece, so it has dimension, which is what, that's what stump work means, is that it's a dimensional piece, is mostly silk, silk ribbon and silk threads, along with some beads. What's interesting to me about this piece is you have these little knots, and then you have oh uh, yes, you know, light 
kind of texture with the veins of the leaves. All these little details, which is lovely. The gold work has a lot of beads also. And little pieces of gold thread are, are cut into tiny little pieces. And then you put a needle through the loop of the, the little piece and stitch it down so that you can make them any shape you want. You can curve them. So they're individual. Individual, uh, tiny little. The beads are all this individually This whole sewn. part, part here, has each one of these little circular things are individually stitched down. This is just rows and rows and rows of them straight. Well, wow. relatively straight, curved a little. What got you into fiber media? <laughs> My father was an embroiderer. Um, actually, he was a physicist. But when he'd come home from work, he'd be wound up, like a lot of us are, like I was when I was working. And uh, he would just come home and sit down and stitch for about an hour before he was ready to face his children, <laughs> his wife, and his dinner. Um, Dad was self-taught. Um, I fortunately had the privilege of coming along far in, late enough that there were wonderful teachers, and there still are wonderful teachers, um, that you can take classes with. Um, skill. Did you do embroidery with your father? Not really. Um, I watched him do embroidery a lot, but then I was going to school and starting out working, and then my father died quite young. Mm. And actually, in 1980 is when he died, and that's about when I started really getting into this because um, one of the pieces that I probably won't no, one of the pieces that I will be showing um, is a uh, flower vase, beautiful flower vase, that he had stitched almost two-thirds of before he died. And then I finished it. And, and then I said, hmm, this is kind of fun. <laughs> and I started t doing more and, try and taking more classes so that I could try all the different kinds of embroidery. Um, there's things I, I don't have because I really didn't like doing it, a lot of uh, needle made um, laces. Okay. And the laces are pretty fussy to do. Um, and I prefer things with more color. <laughs> so did you, you went straight into embroidery? You didn't start with the quilt making or the background? Nope. Okay. Um, Actually, now I do a fair amount of quilting too, but, um, but that's been much more recent. Uh, but when you live with somebody for a long time, watching him doing it, you can kind of get the idea of what to do. Sure. And then because I was able to find really good teachers, um, I caught on probably not quicker than my father, but at least caught up to him right. quickly. Right. That's wonderful. Now, do you, what is your preference? You said the, uh, the crazy quilts? Well, or the crazy? when I first started out, mostly I did cruel work, which is wool thread, um, linen fabric, um, pretty much smooth, kind of like this texture except not silk, it's wool. And 
that was the first thing I started doing, because that was what the piece was <laughs> that I was finishing of my father's. And then counted cross stitch. And counted cross stitch is something that lots and lots of people start out with first. Is that something, is that like the samplers that you see? Uh, very often samplers will be counted cross stitch, although samplers often have other stitches. Um, they're thread on linen usually, but, um, but they'll have a multitude of stitches. The uh, counted cross stitch has one stitch, well, a couple of stitches. They, we do some, sometimes we put some thread around it to pop the picture but otherwise it's really one stitch and it's just an X and you do X's, <laughs> lots and lots of X's and different colors, different threads, well usually all cotton threads when you first start certainly um, but you can do other threads and, uh, and then there's so many different ways that people will do things um, you can take counted cross stitch and, and put part of the picture or clothing article um, with the cross stitch and then add other stitches to it or add other threads. And there really, there used to be a lot of rules. People would say, you know, you had to do just this. Well, the only thing that's just this is, for instance, cruel. Cruel is defined as linen fabric with two-ply wool. And that's just the definition of cruel. That doesn't mean that we don't do cruel-like pieces <laughs> with lots of other stitches in them. Um, I didn't bring any canvas. Hmm. Well, uh, canvas work also has lots and lots of different things, and I'll have a lot of them up on the wall because that was another thing I really enjoyed doing. And so it sounds very much like any art form where you can kind of interpret it and take it. You sure can. Whatever direction you prefer. Um, the the best advice for somebody starting out is to try to do some where you follow instructions. Because when you're following the instructions, you aren't going to have threads falling off or slipping away or, you know, the instructions are there for a reason. But once you master the instructions, then you can do anything you want. <laughs> and then you can do anything crazy. <laughs> um, so joining a group like the Embroiderers Guild uh, here in, in uh, Poughkeepsie, and I will have some, I think I'll, I think I'll be able to have some uh, flyers sitting down on the table um, during the show so that people could pick up a flyer and look and see if they want, if it's something they, they want to do. Um, it's, a, it's not impossible. <laughs> we'll have the, it'll have the name of the person to contact if you want to come, and then we'll get you into some of our Zoom sessions. Um, and do you teach? Oh, yes. You do? Okay. I, taught, well, Anne Friedland um, is, was the person who got me roped into EGA, and she taught a class called Basics that was just the beginning things, and she taught that for, I think, almost 20 years, and she did a lot of things, and then I was also taking classes from other people and seminars and things like that. 
But eventually, Anne had students that she had taught the same thing to <laughs> at least two or three times. And then she asked me to start teaching the next more advanced. So I've been teaching for about 35 years. Um, before our meetings, I would have a class going and we'd try different things, all different kinds of techniques. Um, do you create every day? Do you try to work on things every day? Oh, yes. Um, if, I, if I'm not stitching at least an hour each day, I know that I'm really sick. <laughs> you know, it's just like, or, or I've way overcommitted myself. There are times when that'll happen. Mm -hmm. There'll probably be a day or two when I'm setting up the plan for this show where I won't get to stitch. But I try to stitch for at least a half an hour and more often an hour, well, now I get to teach, to teach. I get to stitch a lot. Right. <laughs>